Designer Notes, Subject 32. What subject would you like us to discuss next? Subscribe and comment to let us know. 7.36 minutes earlier. Yes, words were not needed to describe the GM110G-1A9, but we're going to try anyway. After all, what kind of a review would this be if all you see is the presenter's hands and wrist? But to begin with, it's the wrist where the GM110 shines its golden glimmer. See, under the ironic mixture of gold-plated glamour and utter indestructibility is a proportion that is better suited on most wrists. It was easy to think that it's the same size as the GA110, but it's actually 5mm smaller. This smaller proportion makes it a little more wearable, especially with the golden metal case that clearly attracts attention. The gold is not just straight out polished. Most of the high polished parts are on the rounded areas of the bezel, while the sides are satin finished from the bottom of the case upwards. There's a clear finesse to this metal case. In the GA110, our common nitpick is the seam line that's visible on the side of the case. The GM110 not only does away with the seam lines, but it also does it without adding an additional screw unlike the GA110. Because of the metal case construction, the whole case is dropped on the module and over the buttons. In the GA110, the case surrounds the buttons from top to bottom. The screws on the sides are also hex screws that are angled slightly outwards. The back of the case is also screwed as expected with most G-Shock watches, but this one is using a slightly smaller aluminum case pad. All the markings are laser etched on this one, and expenses are spared for this side of the piece. Flipping it over back at the top side, you are treated with a lush gold color that's not too warm but is polished enough to give you some deep black shadows. Engravings are also deep enough and filled with black paint. These letters are crisp and it's a sure display of Casio's manufacturing ability. The dial, as most may think, bears similarities with the GA110, but upon closer inspection, it has very distinct features. To begin with, Casio used a negative display that's very hard to read in any kind of lighting situation. The backdrop of the display is a gold plate that matches the golden motif of the watch. It uses the non-solar 5553 module that features a world timer, stopwatch, and alarms. It has an auto LED feature, and that's about it. For something that costs 27,000 yen, one might be expecting at least a multiband or a solar module, but this one is really a redressed version of the G-Steel 410 series. The hands of the watch is a refreshing and more elegant take than that of the clockwork hands of the GA110. It also looks more refined because of the gold material used. The broad arrow hands are partly skeletonized that may seem unnecessary, but may have been done to give it additional contrast over the golden wide bridge of the dial. The chapter ring is rather thick and is elegantly studded with gold hour markers. 
This is no cheap chapter ring. You can see a close similarity with its coating to that of the home case. Equally crisp are the printing and the small texts within the dial. Even though they are tiny, they are very legible over the golden finish. Speaking of legibility, the hands have a decent loom painted on them and surrounded by white borders. Under a dark place, the LED can be activated by the upper right button to illuminate the part of the dial. Due to the LED being placed between the 4 and 5 o'clock position, some of the light is obscured by the thick chapter ring. Using this watch is a breeze. With the buttons being oversized, pressing them is a deliberate and precise action. The texture on these buttons are very sharp, providing an additional premium feeling to the watch. This premium sculpting is also done on this remarkable resin strap. The highlight is clearly the pyramid brick pattern that runs from tip to tip. It's soft and very sturdy to the touch. This is decorated with a matching gold-plated buckle with a satin finish. The lugs use a 16mm quick-release system that we are now seeing more and more in recent G-Shock releases. We are anticipating that G-Shock will continue to sell these newer pieces with quick-release straps, and they might be gearing up to sell their own OEM straps so people can have the option to personalize their watches easily. The strap tapers very nicely downwards to your wrist, slimming down the profile even more. However, because of this downward projection, you cannot lay this watch flat on its back. Not that many would care about that sort of thing. The whole case is still around 47mm with a height of 15mm. Beside the GA110, you could immediately think that this is the baby G of the 110 line. Compared to the G-Shock squares, it's still significantly larger and understandably so. The GM110 also has considerable weight to it. It's just a tad lighter than my Seiko Fanny Tuna, which is a pretty muscle-inducing watch by itself. On cuffs, there are chances for this to slip under. In the growing semi-formal business scene, this G-Shock can fit right in with a jacket, sweater, and dark shirts. However, the gold case may look out of place on your summer outfits. The GM110 is a classic gold watch that you can't help but stare at. For those looking to experience the Bling Master feel of the GMWB, 5000 series of golden squares, this is a worthy alternative. There is a growing trend in the watch community of wearing a rubber strap with their golden timepieces. Why even Rolex threw itself in the ring with their new sky dwellers? So why not a rubber clad tank of a watch dressed with enough gold to catch Smaug's attention? For one, this one does not have a waiting list. And most of all, if you are to drop this thing clumsily, it's more likely that it will survive and keep telling you the time without emptying your checking account to repair it. So if you're a lumberjack that's suddenly going corporate, or someone who wants an elegant yet fun watch without breaking the bank, the GM110 is here to scratch your golden itch. <laughs>